А во. Let us go through these three annual festivals. Now, the three annual festivals actually are connected with all the males. According to the scriptures, connected with all the males of Israel. In fact, we get our scriptures here. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 16. Now, this is part of the sabbatical, the sabbatical, um, the sabbatical readings and feedings. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, it is reminding the Beit Israel, especially in 16 and 16. Deuteronomy 16 and 16. So let's write this up here. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 16 and 16. Now that's connected with the um, sabbatical, or what we know as the RSS number 47. The Rastafari Sabbatical Studies and Sabbath Scrolls, and it's known in the Hebrew as Re or often spelled R E E H. Re right? It's known as Re or Re Re Re. You understand? Depends on the particular pointing. Use. Now, this is the same as the Ethiopic word, as we've been discussing, ra-i, which in the Ethiopic means vision, ra-i, you understand, know ra-i, 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 you understand, know which means the vision. So, this refers to to see the RSS in the Sabbatical Torah portion 47, and to see. So the idea imply is to see, but moreover is the vision. Now, Bamarinya, we say Ineho, Ineho, which means, let's write this right here, Ineho, which means, let's see, H-O, Ineho, which means behold, in the sense of behold, in the sense of look or sight, when we say sight as Rastafari, look, sight, but the idea of hear it or hear he is, or hear, here it is, hear he is, here it is, so we have re'e, re'e in the Hebrew, re'e, behold, or, or see, we have ra'i, so let's put this right here, this will be the Hebrew, right here. This would be the Ethiopic right here. This would be the Amharic right here. And now this right here is what we call the Turgum. This would be the Turgum. The, the Turgum, or Jews will call it the Targum. Right? The Targum, the Turgum, or the interpretation. So the RSS number 47, R, E, R, E, R, E, is actually more properly a rai, which means the vision, you understand, and the idea or sense of behold, look, sight, look and sight, here it is, look and sight, behold, look and sight, here it is. Now, Deuteronomy 16 and 16 is where we're at right now. And Deuteronomy 16 and 16, very interesting, is really the foundation, the foundational for what many of us as... Um, Black males, or black men, especially in this so-called diasporic setting, and um, we as Hebrews more clearly, as black Hebrews or black Jews, recognize is the foundation for the church of the men only. Not saying that women have no role in the society. See, a lot of feminism, this post-feministic trauma really has caused a lot of confusion among ones and ones. But when we heard blacktown.net, blacktown.net, and uh, you can go there, check it out. You probably have seen some of the videos before, whether you agree or disagree, so forth and so on. The, the brother has a real point, and other brothers as well have a real point. 
when they are speaking of that there needs to be a church, you understand, or the idea of church or a gathering, you understand, where the black males, you understand, take responsibility before God and before man for themselves and for their family. And what's interesting is that in this 47th Rastafari sabbatical um, scroll or sabbatical study, Torah portion that's known as Re'e or Ra'i or Ineho, look and see, sight, here it is, that we have the very foundation in Deuteronomy 16 and 16. In Deuteronomy 16 and 16. So let's go over here to Deuteronomy 16 and 16 and let's see what it says. In Deuteronomy 16 and 16, it is subscribed as the gift of the males, the gift of the males. It says, three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God, Yahweh Eloheinu, in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of tabernacles, and in the feast of in the Feast of Weeks, you could have thought, and in the Feast of Tabernacles. So he says, in three feasts, three, there are three feasts. One is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The next is the Feast of Weeks. And the third one is the Feast of Tabernacles. And it says, and they shall not appear before Yahweh, yod heh he who is who he is, a true and living God, empty. It says in verse 17, every man sh shall give as he is able according to the barakat or the blessing of Yahweh thy Elohim, which he hath given thee. Now, this is, this is very important. So this is the foundation, in that sense, for the scripture foundation for the church of, of, of men. Let's put men only, of church of men only, and we're speaking now in terms of us as the lost sheep, as the, as the black males, God's people, but God's people who are under a generational, a situation of a generational curse. Now, anyone who has studied so-called black people in the Americas and the Caribbean and really looked at it honestly can see that there's something wrong with this people. There's something wrong with I and I people. And there's been many speculations of what it is, why it is, how it's gotten, so from so on. But most of them have fallen short. Our brother from, um, let's just put this site up here because we want you to reference it. We're going to put uh, uh, Black Town, uh, Black Town, Dot net, and we'll ask you, we'll beg your indulgence to check it out, especially the brothers and the sisters. Actually, the mature, the mature sisters and the mature um, black woman um, to check this out. Our Ethiopian Hebrew woman. Now, 16 and 16 really is the foundation for the church of men only, or the church of black men only, especially these three times. These three times are significant. What we just touched on was a portion from. His Imperial Majesty's autobiography, or He Wate Naya Topia Rinja Bamarinya Nemharic, which means My Life in Ethiopia's Progress. And on page 40, as we have just touched on, let's get page 40 again. There's something 40 and 41. His Imperial Majesty reminds, um, reminds his people in 1913, in 1913, that there were three annual festivals i.e. Meskel Christmas and what's known as Easter or Meskel Lidet and what is known as Fasica. You understand? And we just note this right here again for the record. If you go here, he says that. And then on the other side, he basically says concerning the Sabbath, the keeping of the Sabbath. And if one's going to keep the Sabbath within the community, they are to be punished. He says, hitherto work on the Sabbath was forbidden. Now you will, in fact, be punished when found working on the Sabbath. Now, when we look at Africa and look at everywhere in Africa that was colonized by the so-called white man and by the Gentiles, and we see this exception with this exception with Ethiopia, this exception with Ethiopia. Why this exception with Ethiopia? Why is Ethiopia in this sense different? Now, when some people look at Ethiopia today, 
they might have just the starving babies or what's going on in Somalia or you know they may have a lot of the um the the negative aspects the the negative media you understand of Ethiopia and they might have no real true knowledge of 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 Ethiopia and the Bible you understand and ones need to gain a knowledge of Ethiopia and the Bible and Ethiopia in the Bible the good the bad, you understand, and even whatever ugly, you understand, concerning Ethiopia and the Bible. Often it seems like the negative, people are more attracted to the negative because the spiritual law is like attract like. So until ones are born again, you understand, no amount of pointing out the, the true and the positive of Ethiopia will convince them differently because they've already chosen. You understand, that's why in this particular sabbatical portion, number 47, it begins off in 11 and 25. In 11 and 25, it begins off, 20, actually it's 11 and 26 for this week's reading. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Re'e, re'e, anoki. Behold, I, anoki, re'e. Look, see, here it is. I am setting before you this day a barakat and a rigum, a blessing and a curse. So choose. This is what Yahweh says, choose. So the idea of so-called people having a, a, a right to choose is not anything new. So even this idea of so-called democracy, what's new is white peoples or the Gentiles or the European Greco-Roman version or perversion, if you will, of the principles of people's choice. People have always had a choice. And right here in the scripture, in the Torah, Yahweh is giving us a choice. He gave our ancestors and us in this present day and time, we also have a choice. So this is RSS number 47. This is where we are this week. Now, what was very interesting as well is that connected with all of this, as we're pointing out 16 and 16, which is contained in this RSS number 47, which is pointing out the church of men only, or the, the gathering that Yahweh appointed for the males of the community specifically. You understand? Specifically. You understand? If you wonder why it's so bad for men, and particularly black men, it's because this important, this important um, command... This is the command has been totally, you understand, has been totally ignored. You understand? And therefore, as even Hermes Trismegistus has said, he said the, um, the destruction of the soul is in its ignorance. You understand? The really first sin wasn't so-called sex or any other nonsense they tell you, the apple or eating the apple. No, it was ignorance. It was not knowing that led to disobedience and that led to the generational, these generational curses, you understand, know, these generational curses and this atmosphere of a polluted earth, a spiritually polluted earth, a psychologically polluted earth, and a physically polluted earth. But the Beta Israel, you understand, know, we are the key, you understand, in reversing, in reversing the curse. But first of all, it begins with knowledge. It begins with a certain understanding. It begins with us, first of all, forgetting and denying that which is not good. You understand? And then making our wills obedient, according to the teaching of His Majesty, to good influences. To make our wills obedient to good influences and to avoid evil. In other words, to deny the not good. You understand? And to embrace and make a willingness. You understand? Towards the good. This is the first step. This is the beginning. So the church of the black men or the church of men only is a very interesting idea that blacktown.net, the brother with blacktown.net, and, and all the videos that he has posted up there. And, of course, some of them, some people probably will find very offensive. But can they prove that what he is saying is not true? They cannot prove it. Uh, you know I mean, we have this feminism thing, this feministic movement. I'm sure if we post this as um, of, of the Hebrew church, 
you understand, or the synagogue or the shul or whatever, but for black men or for men only, of course there's going to be a lot of feminists that's going to opine or, or that's going to hate on this, but we don't worry about that. We understand where they come from. We understand what they're about. We understand what's behind their particular game. But what we need to do right now is we need to make our wills obedient to good influences. It's one thing to learn all that we're learning, but we have to learn this and then begin to act on this. So the first step is to learn this and then to begin to act on it because Yeshua, Jesus Christos, the true Jesus Christ or Yeshua, you understand, Yehoshua, he says something very interesting to us, particularly in, um, I think it's John chapter, is it 7 and 17? Let's go to 7 and 17. I think it's 7 and 17 where Christ actually says in 7 and 17, if, if, this is the big key, if any man will do his will, our God, our Father, our God Father's will. He shall know of the doctrine. He shall know of the Timaherit. He shall know of the teaching if he seek to do his will. Now we have his majesty in the speech on religion saying to make our wills obedient to good influences and to avoid evil, thereby using the will and the understanding. You understand the affirmation? And the denial faculties in man is the first very important step of a beginner, you understand, of a newcomer, of a newborn. And it's unfortunate that the majority of churches don't teach this anymore. But it says, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, which is the Timaharit, whether it be of God, whether it be of the truth, of the true God, Ha Elohim Baruch Hu, or whether I speak of myself. It's very important that he says this right here because he says that if anybody does it, we will know it. So we've been talking about the benefits of it. We've been having this intellectual, you understand, you can say, and even psychological and hardcore and, and spiritual conversation, but we have to remember that it has to come into real-time effect. You understand, into real-time effect. So our learning must go hand in hand as we learn and as we begin to truly understand and comprehend. We need to gain that willingness to put it into effect. So we're not saying that we just run out there and do this right now, but we definitely need to study. We definitely need to dialogue. We definitely need to just come, let us, let us reason together as the psalm, one of the Nyabingi psalms that's often said among um, a certain uh, set of Rastafari, and I think other Rastafari probably also say this particular psalm where it talks about, Behold how what? How good and how pleasant it is. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for what? For brethren. You understand? For brethren. You understand? It's 133. Behold, look and see. Behold how what good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This is also speaking to and speaking of these three pilgrim festivals. And let's write the name up there while we have the opportunity right now. These three, three pilgrim festivals are known as the Shah. Losh Regalim. The Shalosh, like Salase, Shalosh, you know what I'm saying, or Salus, you know what I'm saying, Shalosh Regalim. Regalim, which has implies in it the foot and movement and walking, or you know, the pilgrimage. The pilgrimage, that we would journey to this one place, the place that God had chosen, you know what I'm saying, that God had chosen. You know what I'm saying? In the land. In the land. Now that means that I and I, the place that he has chosen for I and I is the African Zion, is Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? This means that at least three times a year, according to this, you know what I'm saying, there should be a pilgrimage, you know what I'm saying, of I and I, of I and I, Hebrew, black Hebrews, black Jews, elect Rastafari you overstand, and gather in the place that he has chosen for us. 
Some might say it's Shashimani. Some might say it's Adis, so forth and so on. But still, we must gather together for those pilgrim festivals. You understand? So here is the, here is the, the crux of what our brother Black Town, you understand, also referring heavily to the Bible as a basic, as a, as a base, as a foundation to build upon. You know what I'm saying? This right here is, is definitely the key because it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And here it says in Deuteronomy 16, 16, Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. One, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Two, in the Feast of Weeks, or the Pentecost, or Shuvahot, and three, in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they, speaking of I and I and I, shall not appear before Yahweh empty. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the barakat, the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. So what he has given us, how he has blessed us in our occupational labor and in our task, you understand, as Amanyoch, as Mitmanan, you understand, we are to give of that according to our ability. So there's a connection. So if one don't give but says, yes, I'm of Jah, so forth and so on, you're saying that Jah has not blessed you. What is your problem? You understand? Are you doing something wrong? Because it can't be God that is wrong. Something must be wrong with you because God is not mocked. You understand? But you are. You understand? Or we are if we fall short, you understand, of that glory through willing disobedience. So this is the beginning. This is the foundation. This particular Torah study right here is a very important foundation for the church, you understand, of men only.